I had this hilarious and mortifying dream. Nice. I was playing soccer in nothing but my chonies. So I turned it into an AI animated short film. I'll show you exactly how to do it step by step using Artlist text to image and image to video tools. I'll teach you not only the visual part, but how to integrate voiceover, also using some of Artlist's features like voice to voice. Oh my. <laughs> edit music, sound design, and turn a little story that my brain made while sleeping into reality. Hi, if we haven't met, my name is Jordan Orm. I'm a pro editor for Nike, Google, Mr. Beast, Justin Bieber, and I love to break down editing on YouTube. Now the time of making AI films is here. And if you think this is gonna be a big thing in the future, I think you are absolutely correct. Now I don't wanna propose AI as a replacement for amazing human animators, human creativity, cinematographers, VFX artists. I think humans creating art is always the best way to go. But what if you don't have the money to hire animators, or you wanna make something just for fun or as a temp project, this is for you. The new season of Rick and Morty has been out the last couple of months. So I wanted to create the film inspired in that style. It's an amazing show, all credit to those animators and creators. Get your hands off my death race car. And they've inspired people like me to try my hand at animation and to tell stories that wouldn't have been able to be told otherwise. Instead of doing the usual linear workflow, we're doing an animation workflow where it's completed in loops, sometimes backtracking to different parts of the process to make new and better versions all supported by the edit. This is the most efficient way to do it in order to get the best result. So let's get started with prompting. So what I like to do is utilize AI and just verbalize the story as if I was telling the dream to a friend. So the dream is that I was in a soccer tournament in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's a bright, sunny, beautiful day. There's a big soccer con. And then I also talked to AI and created a storyboard in my head. So I said something like, shot one is a wide shot of a giant soccer complex. And it's beautiful. There are trees all around. Shot two is a POV of me running towards the goal with cleat. And then you just keep doing that and verbalize what you're seeing in the movie screen of your mind to AI. And then you just tell AI to write prompts and it will give you prompts for images that you have described. So I got all the prompts, but there isn't a consistent character description of me in the story. So I'm a guy with brown hair and that's pretty much it. So I just made sure that AI added that into all of the prompts. And then I had to make sure that AI included a consistent environment description in each and every prompt because every single image generation is unique and it doesn't remember the setting of where the story takes place. So that's something that had to be added into all the prompts. So I just made those changes, copy and pasted the prompts into Artless AI text to image. Sometimes I had to go in and edit specific things in the prompts to get better results, whether it's adding people into the background, changing the setting, changing the facial expression. And then I did 16 by nine, one image and generate. And then there was some very specific minor things in the images that were a problem. So I needed to go into Photoshop to clean them up. On this image, the legs looked a little bit weird, so I actually just selected a certain area and I used Photoshop's AI generator to generate alternate options of what the legs looked like. And I wasn't actually able to generate a, a shot without me wearing a shirt. I uploaded the image and just zoomed in more on my face for this reaction shot. And then I just generated a longer neck at the bottom. So I was able to make it look like I wasn't wearing a shirt. And then lastly, on this shot, I wanted to zoom in so the crowd looked a little bit bigger. And then I also distorted it and skewed it a little bit. So it makes the parents look bigger and a little bit more looming as they're pointing at me and laughing. And we don't wanna replicate the Rick and Morty style perfectly, but we want to do something sort of similar that's inspired by it. And it is a fine line, so be careful with that. This is more just a for fun project. So once I generated the stills, I added them into a little collage software so I can see them sequentially and see if it makes sense in the context of the story. And the reason I do this is because sometimes, like in this scenario, I realized that that the order should actually be switched. This shot should go here, this shot should go there. And you can only see that when you see them in a storyboard format. That's why in Pixar, they have giant rooms just full of storyboards so you can visually see how one shot connects to the other. And so it's super important to do that. Don't just generate storyboards and assume it's gonna work. Lay it out 
so you can see it visually and then you can rearrange. And now from here, it's time to start editing. So what's even better than just seeing the storyboards laid out is actually seeing them in action paced out in an edit. I'm gonna record my voiceover. Here we go. I once had this dream that I was in a huge soccer tournament. I broke away, speeding towards the goal. It was the most embarrassed I'd ever been while catching some Zs. Okay, we're first gonna bring all of our storyboards in, lay them out in order. And I think I'm gonna change this so that the plot twist is that it was a dream at the end. You know, that classic film trope where you wake up and it's like, oh, it was a dream. Maybe we'll generate one more image too of me waking up. I don't know. And let's add one more voiceover line. And then I woke up. Turns out it was all a dream. Okay, I think I actually might add some music too because sometimes the music changes the pacing. So I'm gonna head to Artlist Library and music is right inside of Premiere Pro. So it's super easy. You can get this plugin by heading to Artlist, going to Tools and then downloading the Premiere Pro extension. I think I wanna pick something that is a little more whimsical, a little more light and fluffy and happy, but then also intense at the same time to capture the emotion of what I was feeling. It was extremely embarrassing. I like this, this is good. So I think I'm gonna need two songs probably. All I have to do, click and drag it in and we're good to go. Once you start adding music and voiceover, it's really gonna start to feel like a film. And this is where you can get the pacing right. Once I realize my embarrassing moments, we will transition the music. Do you want the emotion to be, oh, this is awesome, this is so cool, he's about to score, wait. Something just happened. So that's why we're editing the music right here to end at this point. I was about to shoot, but then the goalie just started laughing at me. Now we need our next song. Tense, cinematic, fantasy vibe. <laughs> I kind of like this. And we get a big like, Boom, right when I realize the issue. We wanna score our music to where different changes in the music happen at the same time of different changes in the story. And then I realized I only had my undergarments on. Everybody started. <laughs> so, and then I need kind of like an ending here. Three, four, one. So I'm kind of just combining little parts of the music to be exactly what I want. I love music editing. One of my favorite parts of the editing process. Okay, so here's the storyboard edit with voiceover and music. So now it's starting to actually feel a little bit like a film. Once I was in this huge soccer tournament, I broke away, speeding towards the goal. I was about to shoot, but then the goalie just started laughing at me. And then I realized I only had my undergarments on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go, it's not too bad. And so now we are inside of our hub. We're inside the wheel where we're starting to go back to image generation. You saw that because I decided, you know what, we're gonna add an extra shot of me waking up. So now we're going back to prompting and then adding that into our storyboarding software. And now we're gonna start animating our stills and figuring out if they fit within the context of the sequence we already have going. Head to Artlist, Image to Video, and upload the still. And in order to come up with the prompt for this, in this first shot, I actually just used the suggested prompt right inside Artlist, which worked great. But I also like to go into AI and have it help me write a image to video prompt for all the shots that we already laid out. And so it just gives me a starting point to have a really nice prompt because the AI already understands the story that I'm trying to tell. And then I can go in and tweak the camera movement. I can tweak the expression. I can change all kinds of little things to make it exactly how I'm envisioning it in my brain. So once my prompt's ready, I'm gonna import the footage, copy and paste in my prompt, maybe make a couple of changes just to customize it. And another reason why it's also a good idea to pace out your shots is because then you know how long of a clip you need and how much time is allotted for every single clip. And so I think the longest clip in this sequence is three seconds, so I can always do five seconds. And then I'm gonna do 1080 because we want the best resolution. And let's animate it. So while that's animating, which does take a little while, I'm gonna start adding some sound design to beef up the whole sound experience. And again, we're gonna use the Artlist library right in Premiere, go into sound effects and start adding some in. 
everybody started pointing and laughing at me. I'm gonna use this crowd laughing to create a riser and add some reverb and make it super echoey and weird so it starts to feel like it's a dream right at the very end during this close up. So I do that by adding surround reverb and then I'm just gonna cross fade the two together. So it's gonna go from normal laughing to surround reverb laughing to keep cathedral, turn up the gain a lot and then the mix down a tiny bit. Nice, I like that. Then we're gonna add some sounds to make this feel like a realistic space. So it's not dreamland, like a little air conditioner. Let's check back on our animations, by the way. Check this out. It looks not too bad. Instead of wasting a bunch of credits, animating everything, trying to cut it together and realize, oh, it doesn't really work. I'm just gonna download every shot one at a time, put it into my timeline, test it out, see if it works. And then if it works, we'll move on to the next shot. It's very much a circular workflow where we're kind of doing everything all at once. And I'm gonna rename this 1v1 just so I can keep track of everything. It's fun, I don't do this workflow very often because I'm not really an animation editor. So here we go, first shot. Once I was in this huge soccer tournament. It kind of works. Next shot, dribbling towards the goal. Just then, a new music idea struck me. I was about to shoot, but then the goalie just started so what if I actually just pitch shift this down? Because right now it sounds like something good's about to happen. It's like, Wah. but we want it to be like, Wah. which makes us be like, oh wait, this, this is not how we expected. So I'm adding a pitch shifter and I pitch shift it down one semitone and that just pitches it down one note. So it's gonna go. To shoot, but then the goalie just started laughing. Wah. That's actually fire. It works really well. So that really just changes the emotion right there. Uh oh. This did not work whatsoever. So we're gonna try again. While this is animating, I'm actually gonna try to use Artlist's new voice to voice to play a character that's not me. So I can play myself with my own voice pretty easily, but I can't do the goalie's voice per se. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to record myself laughing and then I'm going to upload it to voice to voice and see if it works for a different character. <laughs> 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 that was my performance. I hope you liked it. <laughs> so I'm gonna export that and upload it to voice to voice. Now we need to find a voice that we wanna turn this into. Probably like a teenager male voice. If you ask me, it's all about precision. Oh, this is actually pretty good. Okay, so let's try this guy. I'm gonna upload that voice. We'll see if this works. I know words work really well, and I've done that, but I don't know about laughing. Laughing could just be a disaster. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of worked. It's not too bad. I think there's sections that we could use that'll work. And then I realized it actually works pretty well. I don't know if it's gonna sync to the animated version, but we'll see when we get there. So now we're going all over the place. I'm doing sound design, I'm animating images, I'm putting images in, and it's just chaos at this point. I broke away, speeding towards the goal. I was we're just gonna rock with this for now, but hopefully I'll have enough credits to replace it later. All right, next frame, the goalie laughing. Always include your camera movements when you're animating or no camera movements. And this, I just want it to be still so that we just get the comedic effect. Then the goalie just started <laughs> laughing at me and then I realized. <laughs> okay, let's try our next shot. Yeah, see, this is not gonna work at all. So I'm going to maybe go back to that original prompt. A lot of action in the frame is not working super well. So I'm trying to be very subdued with the motion and very small. In filmmaking, small movements and not exaggerated movements are a lot more believable. And so we can connect with the characters much easier if that's the case. This is kind of funny, me floating actually. <laughs> That's a happy accident, I think. Only had my undergarments on. Everybody started pointing. Because this is a static shot, I can just cut this and have me put my head down a little bit earlier. I only had my undergarments on. Everybody <laughs> This actually might be better as a still. So I'm going to just freeze me. So I made this top layer a still, and then I'm just going to mask it out. And so the people in the background can move, but I will stay frozen. I only had my undergarments on. Everybody's- Yeah, little masking tricks, especially on static shots are great. Six, we're almost there, bro. I don't really need exaggerating motion because I don't think it's gonna work that well. Pray for me, I hope this works. This is insane, bro. This is actually nuts. <laughs> Might be fun to add in one more shot too, right here. 
I might want an additional shot, an image prompt for other soccer players on the field pointing and laughing. These parents stop pointing, like they start pointing and then they stop, but I might actually reverse it so they start actually pointing. Let's try that. If the shot doesn't work perfectly, oftentimes you can manipulate it in post and editing and make it work for your sequence. Reverse it. Everybody started pointing. Okay, cool. Oh, this is good. This is good. I have a new storyboard between shot six and seven. I'm gonna call it 6A. Now let's animate it. I like this. We'll, we'll rock with it. Everybody started pointing and laughing at me. Now this close-up reaction shot is a key shot and I envisioned a dolly zoom. It kind of creates this stretching effect. One of the most famous examples is in Jaws when the main character realizes that a shark attack is happening. Usually it's for some crazy, wild, weird moment. And so I wanted to make sure that that was in the prompt. And another way to create prompts is actually uploading the image to AI and said, hey, can you help me create a prompt specifically for this image? So for this prompt, we have animate a dolly zoom effect. And then in addition to that, start with the cameras slowly zooming in on the brown haired teen's horrified face while simultaneously pulling the background outward. Create a dramatic stretching effect. So AI helped me verbalize and prompt what a dolly zoom would actually look like. All right, let's see if this worked. Not too bad. And I am wearing a shirt right here, so we're gonna just zoom that in and frame it out. I want it to feel like the world is closing around him a little bit more, so I'm gonna add a lens distortion effect, and we're gonna curve it in like this. First I've ever been. <laughs> Not bad. I'm gonna add a quick flash here by adding the color effect and turning up the exposure. Let's try this. I'm gonna try to make my mouth match with what he's saying. And then I woke up. His mouth opened, so I'm gonna add a little gasp there to just match with that. <laughs> oh my, I'm, I'm trying to be an actor here. I've ever been. And then I woke up. The nice thing with animations is you can add a lot of freeze frames to time things to be the way you want. I'm gonna add a little slight zoom in here. Nest the sequence. I only had my undergarments on. But then the goalie just started <laughs> laughing at me. And then I re- It kind of looks like he's mouthing nice. So I'm gonna make our AI voice goalie say that. Nice. And now I'm gonna upload me saying nice and change my voice into this guy's voice. Nice. And here is my dream visualized for you all in animation. Once I was in this huge soccer tournament, I broke away speeding towards the goal I was about to shoot, but then the goalie just started <laughs> laughing at me. Nice. And then I realized I only had my undergarments on. Everybody started pointing and laughing at me, and it was the most embarrassed I've ever been. And then I woke up. <laughs> so there we have it. It's just a fun exercise to do. Obviously, it doesn't replace professional animators. Their artwork deserves all the credit it can get, but it is fun to play around like this and see what we can do. So again, the process is creating prompts, generating storyboards, starting to edit, starting to animate the storyboards, add sound effects, add your voiceover, and then put it all together in Premiere, and you're good to go. So what about you? Would you dare to visualize your a little bit weird dream that you had that was horrifying and now is scarring you slightly? Let me know in the comments. If this breakdown and tutorial was helpful for you, please hit the subscribe button. Let us know what you thought give us ideas for future breakdowns, we would love to hear from you. And if you wanna mess with some of these AI tools, get amazing sound effects, music, AI voiceover, definitely check out the link and get Artlist. All right, have fun creating.